Chapter 15. Together, Chet and I slipped onto, onto the pirate base fragment. Our touch point was a good half hour from the base, so as we crept closer and closer, Chet showed me how to keep a low profile and stay behind hill or tree cover. He, we also sent Mbot to scout a path for us, telling him to use an infrared to watch for heat signatures that might indicate a sentry. As we crept along, I thought of what I'd seen the previous night. Once my interactions with Jorgen and Braid were crisp and clear in my mind, or once again, my interactions with Jordan and Braid were crisp and clear in my mind, and I'd been a little more in control, a little more active in what I'd been doing. That excited me. I was improving. The terrain here was dotted with scraggly trees that were like stumpy, pensa-sized analogs to the massive ones from the last jungle fragment. Various boulders and hills made for a poor killing field. I'd have set up uh, my base on a sturdy flat fragment with minimal cover, Maybe losing one of their ships would teach these pirates a lesson, because getting up close was way too easy. I was getting antsy, eager. If this went well, I'd be flying before the hour was out. Chad and I staked out a treetop small hill, some 50 meters from the base's buildings. Together, on our bellies, we inched up behind the trees to where we could see over the top of the hill and study the base. As far as we could tell, we'd been able to approach unnoticed. Unfortunately, we couldn't rule out hidden cameras. It would depend on what the pirates had been able to salvage, so I watched for any signs the pirates were on alert. Their base was made up of three large structures, rectangular with rounded tops, like old school hangars. It was a nostalgic design, but didn't make much sense with modern starfighters, which were universally VTOL aircraft, thanks to Activity Stone vertical takeoff and landing. Do you suppose that they built those structures? I asked Chet. Doubtful, Chet whispered back. From what I understand, the pirate factions each set up on fragments with pre-existing buildings, old outposts, or the like. Will this fragment have a portal? It's possible, but unlikely. Most do not, after all. I nodded, thinking it through. We'd seen how fragments grew, matter collected around little pinprick weaknesses between dimensions, each eventually forming into these landscapes. I didn't know for certain if that matter slipped in from the somewhere or was just re replicated here. Did this mean the caverns of Detrius had formed because bits of rock had slipped into the nowhere? There was no way to tell right now, but either way, it did seem Chet was right about the portals not being on most fragments. Maybe those only formed on fragments where the holes between dimensions were big enough that Cytonics could get through? Well, for now, I needed to keep my mind on stealing a ship. Of the three hangars, two were dark at the moment. The third, the one in the center, had its bay door open wide and flashes of light inside indicated welding or electrical work going on. I was surprised to see electricity at first, but most modern starfighters had energy-packed power matrices that could last years. Plug one of those in and you'd be able to power the lights and equipment of a hangar like this. My sensor indicated indicate two people keeping watch, and Bot whispered from where he hovered at my side. One at the window directly ahead in the lit hangar, another right inside the bay doors. If they're using electronic surveillance, it's wired, as I don't detect broadcasts on any known frequencies. They won't broadcast carelessly ab abomination, Chet whispered. Old habits will prevent them. Noted war eyeball, Mbot said. We sat in silence for a moment. Okay, Chet whispered. I, I have to ask, wart eyeball? I was going to call you wart face, Mbot said, as humans often append face to insults. But warts are you frequently on faces. I instead picked a body part that doesn't usually grow warts, a way of implying your stupidity is rational to the point of impossibility. Chet glanced at me. Him being weird does not mean he's an abomination, I whispered. I was more trying to decide if that insult rated a one or a zero, Chet muttered, looking back at the hangers. So, Miss Nightshade, how would you like to proceed? I believe your military training supersedes my experience in this instance. Let me think and observe, I said. I couldn't get a good look at the pirate in the window, but they didn't seem to be keeping a close watch. The other one that Emboat had noted strolled out into the light, a rifle hanging from his shoulder. To my surprise, he was human and had a patchy beard that hadn't grown in straight. He wore a long overcoat, a t-shirt, jeans, a boots, and a hat. A nautical hat, like a full-on tricorn. I could barely hold it in a thrilled squeal. What? Chet whispered, noticing my grin. These ones actually look like pirates. Indeed, Chet said. Human traditions have had a large influence on populations like these. From what I've been able to gather, our conquest of the galaxy made it trendy, perhaps a little exotic, to use human terms and fashion for outlaws. He squinted. That said, I didn't expect to find an actual human among their ranks. Not a lot of us around these days. The pirate in the window leaned out and called something. They were definitely a dion, a right, judging by their red, color, red coloring. Looks like they're doing some repairs, I said. And bot, swing around the rear and see if you can get a count on how many people are inside. If it appears safe, hover up to one of those windows and learn what you can about the starfighters. Understood, he said, and zoomed off. 
He was extremely quiet. That was why I'd been able to use the drone for spy missions. I wished we still had the holographic projector to give him some limited camouflage. Fortunately, that guard didn't seem particularly observant. He yawned as he strolled back toward the hangar opening. Miss Nightshade, Jess said, what we are about to try is much more dangerous than our previous endeavors. That guard is armed and we risk capture or wounding. I'm willing to take the risk. As am I, Chet said, but I feel that we should, out of an abundance of caution, leave your icon behind. Leave it behind, I said. Why in the stars would we do that? That icon is one of the most valuable things in the nowhere, he explained in a hushed tone. If we are captured, I would not want the pirates to gain possession of it. Instead, I feel we should bury it here. If we succeed in claiming a ship, we can return at some future date and recover it. If we fail, then the icon will be safe. But we need it to fly out of it there, I said. Without it, we'll lose our memories. It is the ashes that are important for our immediate needs, Chet said. With a pocket full of those, we can go months without any dangerous effects. And so, we can bring those with us and risk their loss, but keep the much more valuable object hidden. Scud, there was a logic to his words. If this went wrong, I'd be much happier if my icon was safe. But at the same time, I had seen, I had seen the way Chet stared at it. I wanted to trust him. I did trust him, but... If he wanted to take the icon, then persuading me to bury it here would be a great first step. I wavered. Chet had treated me with nothing but honor so far, but my concerns hovered at the back of my mind. He'd appeared at, in such an unusual way, specifically when I needed him, and Bot's old pilot, conveniently missing the memories that, that could help him prove who, he, who he'd been. Hiding the icon is probably a good idea, I said to Chet, so he wouldn't sense my suspicions. I fished out the pouch and made a show of dumping the reality ashes back into my pocket, but I also palmed the pin. Then I buried the pouch as he'd suggested, except empty. Afterward, I handed him a pinch of ashes in case we get split up, I told him. He stared at the ashes an uncomfortably long time before tucking them away, and as his attention was on them, I covertly slipped the pin into another pocket. Soon, Mbot came hovering in from behind. There are three pirates working in the hangar, he whispered to us, and one other person in an inner room. No other heat signatures in the building. Right, that made six total in that hangar. The guard, the one at the window, the one farther inside, and three workers. There are ten other heat signatures, Embot whispered. Six in one hangar building, four in the other. I think those are all asleep. At least their heat signatures indicate recumbent figures in smaller rooms. Probably divided into three flights, I guess. Each hangar houses a flight, and one group is left on duty to watch every time the others sleep. Agreed, Embot said. There are four starships in the open hangar, and one is being worked on by the mechanics. Six people... Four pilots, two ground crew, down two ground crew, maybe? That sounds likely, I whispered. Anyway, into that open hangar from behind? There is a small open door at the rear, Embot said, probably to let air in during the welding. Awesome, I said. We should strike while the other two flights are asleep. Chet, your job is to make a distraction. Can you do something that isn't so dangerous as to make them sound the alarm, but which has a good chance of drawing the attention of not only the guards, but the three mechanics, too? Possibly, he said. The broadsiders are known as the most level-headed of the pirate factions. I've encountered other guides or groups who have traded with them, or even been employed by them for a short time. I think it will be safe enough to walk up with some reality ashes and offer to trade. How likely are they to grab you, I asked, steal the ashes and enslave you? It's a distinct possibility, he admitted, but again, I believe it's a worthwhile risk. I don't trust any pirates, but if we're going to approach a faction in this manner, the broadsiders are the ones I'd choose. They should be interested in trading, but will want to keep a, want to keep an, a good eye, or ten, depending on the species, on me just to be careful. Let's go with it then, I said. Mbot and I will sneak around back. Once you've distracted the pirates, we'll slip into the hangar from behind and hotwire a starfighter. You are certain you can accomplish that feat? Chet asked. Well, little in life is absolutely certain, Mbot said but I find it highly unlikely that these pirates have security I can't instantly break. I'd say it's more likely that you spontaneously grow a wart from your eye. You, um, wart eye. I eyed him. Chet's right. That's definitely a zero. Ready then, Chet said. Let's do this. Once I have the ship, I said, we'll activate the weapons and force the pirates to lie on the floor. Run for the ship and climb up into the cockpit. We'll escape, and then we can send Embok to sneak back and grab the icon. An excellent plan, Chet said. When do I make the destruction? I'll send Embot to signal you when I'm in position, then count to a hundred before you go for it. We share a nod, then I withdrew to begin sneaking around to the other side of the base.